How are you guys doing? We are back for a gig recap log. Nam gig log. Gig log, Nam cap re. <laughs> anyway, it's been a long week. Let, let's just call it like it is. It was a very long week. I uh, whew, I know I needed a break. I need a break. <laughs> you need a break from your break of coming out here. <laughs> right. Right. Let's just take it back. We're going to take it back. But before we do that, I just want to say if you use promo code Drew and Fuse Show, it'll get you 30% off your first month of activation at directmusicservice.com. Once again, promo code Drew and Fuse Show gets you 30% off your first month at directmusicservice.com. And we also want to mention we have our new sponsor from Crate Hackers. We have probably already done a Crate Hackathon, so make sure you go. Uh, search the YouTubes and watch that. You can watch a little bit if that if you weren't already online and enjoyed it. Right, right. Um, and with that being said, we will be doing one a month, and they will be themed. Um, so each time we're on, it'll be a different theme, and we'll be talking music and just taking over the whole event. So um, shout out to Crate Hackers and look out for those because we'll be on live. If you want to ask us questions directly, uh, that will be your chance to do it too. So. If you have any, you know, music genres or topics you want us to hit, then just, you know, message us and then we'll make sure to include it on the upcoming events. So let's get to it. Sunday morning, I finished my gig at Red Leprechaun, which uh, was a pretty good night. It was one of those where it was like I looked at the clock, it was 1015 and then I looked at the clock and it was 130 and I was like, oh, shit, we're almost over. Like, it's almost it's almost done. And then um uh, it was done and I drove home and I got my bags and then I literally had an Uber already called and I went to the airport. I uh, got in to Drew's, I think at right around 11 ish, 11 in the morning. Well, well, let's say these, when we try and plan these, they're action packed and we have to work them into like every second. So we don't lose money on gigs and, you know, make sure that we're getting into do more gigs. <laughs> so it is, uh, you know, doing the red eyes and, attempting to sleep on those planes to then get up and drink the the whole day and slash week <laughs> right right yeah it's it could be a little tiring the it's not as you know traveling is fun but it's it becomes a job and uh as you'll be able to see because i vlogged the whole thing and when this airs i'm hoping to have the vlog completely up uh so hopefully the vlog will be up now Got in Sunday. We went and got some tacos, and that was fun. Um, had planned to play at Drew Spot Bungalow. It was me, Drew, and Kevin, and uh, that was a good time. Drew, you want to? Kevin talk Scott. About that? Let's make sure. Yeah, Kevin Scott. He uh, came out of retirement. Shout out to Kevin. You know me and Fuse always talk about Kevin. And if you didn't check out his episode, make sure you go back and do it. So, because you know we we hype him up on. Uh, you know, being a big part of our careers and coming up and a big influence on, you know, just music wise. And so, you know, it was cool to see Kevin in action, you know, ripping through some tracks and we had a bunch of homies come out. It was, it was just a, a fun day of, you know, uh, hanging out and playing tracks. Right. The bungalow is really cool spot. And once again, I know we've talked about it a lot on the podcast, but just to kind of give you guys an idea, this one is the Huntington Beach one. It's literally right on Pacific Coast Highway right there. So it's uh, the bungalow, the highway, and then the beach. So you can literally see the beach from the venue. It's like you're sitting in somebody's house that has a bar, uh, a nice, comfy <laughs> little house. And uh, so, so we, we were in the backyard uh, drinking it up. And then I started out and then Fuse went on for just a minute. And then pretty much Kevin took over and played as we uh enjoyed the sunset and you know just kind of 
chatted with friends. Like we had a ton of people come out. Shout out to all the listeners that made a trek out. Uh, DJ Jass, the guys from DJ Pros, DJ Pinky, Coley Cole, Impact, DJ Wildcat, Johnny Risk, and Juan Castro. And I mean, it was just like having a party and at a house and. You know, all Kevin's friends came out as well, so we had a we had a nice nice bunch of people out. It was really yeah, fun Jason B as well. He came out, made an appearance. Didn't tell us, didn't tell us he was coming, and then showed yeah. up. So that was a nice surprise. It was fun. It was, it was, it was nice for me to get to play some new music. Well, I say new music, but really, <laughs> a lot of it's like uh, old music that I used to get to play, and I don't get to play anymore because I don't have a cool venue like that. But uh, it was fun. And uh, I had a good time, and um, I enjoyed getting to hang and chat with everybody. And we're expecting some of those edits to uh, pop up on DMS at some point. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> I posted some. So some of them uh, were posted, I think I posted them the Wednesday after. So when this airs, it'll be a week uh, that they'll have been up on the site already. So um, you can just search Fusomania, and a lot of those will pop up. The more recent ones were edits from that night. And, you know, gigs like this, we're always trying to impress each other with, you know, oh, where'd you get that? <laughs> Send that one over. Uh, so that was cool to just check out Fuse and check out Kevin and, you know, how they dug and their interpretation of that that day. So great day. Super fun. And, you know, basically, I think we were all kind of beat by the time that was over. And it right. about, <laughs> ended about nine. And like you just heard, Fuse, you know, was kind of on a whirlwind of a trip as it was so we came home crashed out monday we didn't do anything except for <laughs> instead of being complete uh turds we decided to be productive and we worked on our website and a couple other things on the back end that drew and i needed to handle but if you guys haven't checked it out yet we do have a new website up if there's anything you'd like to see on the website let us know anything that you think we should add uh, we do have a shop but we're doing limited run stuff for the moment. So the last limited run um, ended and that was removed. So that was the punks t-shirt. So if you guys ordered a punks t-shirt, you should be um, getting that in the mail sometime soon. Uh, but we want to say thank you to everybody that ordered that. And like I said, that's pretty much what we did all day Monday. Check well, out the site. Speaking of the store, I'm sorry to cut you off, but yeah, we're going to, we have a, a new a little exclusive coming up. We don't want to burn it, but Oh, you yeah. know, just being able to run elbows at rub elbows at at Nam. You're always, uh, you know, talking with people and you know, working out just ideas and and so we have a, a little surprise exclusive coming up for you guys uh, that will be appearing on the the website here shortly. Yeah, that should be a little fun little thing. Nothing crazy, but still a uh, nice little uh, thing that you guys can help support the show with. But yeah, so we finished that up, and like I said, check it out if you guys like it. Let us know if you hate it. Let us know. Um, hey, and if you have ideas, you know, we're we're always looking to improve. You know, one thing that we have been pushing lately, I don't know if you guys noticed, but we keep saying how uh, certain guests will have killer websites and then other guests, not so much. Uh, right. You know, not calling anybody out, but the ones that do, you know, they really stand out and it makes a huge difference if a client's going to book you or whatever. So, uh, if you think ours sucks, then tell us how to improve it. Right. Everything, you know, Drew does his website on his own. I do my website on my own. We made this one on our own, you know. So basically everything that you see is us, you know. All the logos that get made for the show is us. We do all that, you know. So it's basically when we can find the time to fit it in. So any any feedback is good feedback for the stuff. For us. Instead of uh, not sponsored by Liquid Death, this video is not sponsored by Squarespace. Right, <laughs> aka where we get all where we make all our websites but not sponsored by squarespace uh is where, <laughs> where you can get our websites i think it's one of the better ones i i have tried wix and i've tried some of the other ones but squarespace just this seems to be rock solid yeah and they make it really easy to kind of understand so if you're out there thinking like hey maybe i should maybe they're talking about me maybe i should update my website I would definitely check out Squarespace. It makes it very, very simple for somebody who has no idea how to do any kind of web design at all to make a website. So I would highly even, recommend checking it out. Even just having, you know, a splash page, right? Just a splash page that's maybe 
uh, like a one page that says, Hey, I've done this. I've done this. Here's all my links. And here's a featured mix. Just right. one place that has everything. You could keep it as basic as that, but you should at least have your DJ name handle and get all that stuff situated, locked down. You could literally create a Squarespace. If you have your domain name, they walk you through how to do it on Squarespace to point your, your, your domain or excuse me, your Squarespace site to your donate main and vice versa. You could have a picture and all your social links on there. And I think that would be better than having nothing or even for example, like we, we what we used to do was we had our like link tree or solo solo two is what it's called. Uh, yeah. It's still, I think better than that. I think it's better than doing that. It's just a little more professional looking. Right. A hundred percent. I think way more professional looking and you could, you know, embed, like I said, a mix where instead of the problem with those solos is uh, it takes you to one thing, but then they click off of it, right? Whereas right. the website at least keeps you on the page uh, versus clicking off. Once they click off, who's to say if they come back? Right. So enough talk about our website and why you should go look at it. And uh, stay tuned also for another uh, limited T-shirt release. We have some ideas that we're going we're gonna to release um, soon with that as well uh moving forward tuesday we spoke at the video dj conference and um, we got picked up tuesday morning by jason b he drove us out to the hollywood where the video dj conference was and uh, yeah shout out to mr e and dj callen putting it on and you know it was it was dope dude I, it was a lot uh i don't know what I, we didn't really have much expectations you know um, but it was, it was really, really well done. And I hope they, they keep pushing on it for next year and keep adding to it and expanding it even more. There's a lot of good speakers. We only went Tuesday, but there was a lot of great speakers. Uh, we being one of them, we caught the very tail end cause we got there late, but we caught the tail end of, of Chris Washburn's video. Uh, it was probably if awake the there. pants <laughs> that, you know, made you draw that blank that he had on. You were just thinking of him and them nice banana pants <laughs> are those banana pants are you happy to see me um <laughs> exactly uh no That's... he had an awesome speech that he talked about incorporating video into your weddings and um uh, it was it was all encompassing in how he uses video uh we got up we did our talk about kind of our upcomings and how we both dj video now and what it's been able to do for our careers also just about you know branding and answer some questions and basically that after that we broke for lunch and we were able to just connect with all the all the the people that came out for the uh, conference which was really cool right um we went to trejo's tacos in hollywood yeah. which uh yeah. it's danny trejo's spot they got a couple spots now he's got a cookbook out machete and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> machete they, they had a <laughs> um shot in a beer pairings and uh you know Which i don't know the downfall of the day <laughs> <laughs> i don't know anybody who does those but <laughs> uh, See, yeah, you, but, you put a shot in a beer you might need to look into that now i'm just throwing it out there but a shot have in it a beer, on the menu it's, it's our oh, happy it's, yeah you get a shot of guinness and a, a shot or a, a pint of guinness and a shot of telemar do that's our happy hour special okay see uh, we don't I don't have that for the most of the places I go to. Thank fucking God. Because once I saw that, I was like sold. And that uh, continues the upswing and downfall of the, the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah. Everybody went back and started talking. And then Drew and I got sidetracked because we walked past a record store. And we couldn't not go in. <laughs> and uh, I bought a few vinyls. We, we also bought uh, – Washburn was talking about Superman and his uh, – uh his his talk so we we came across a couple superman vinyls and we had to snatch those up for him um, yeah well we got back um you know Dini was there steve wonder callen roughneck was on stage talking too yep and roughneck and they were just talking about you know that how they have used video to just really take their career to another level and how they do unique and interesting stuff with their edits so it was it was that was a great speech it was really cool to watch it was fun to be a part of it i liked the intimate setting of it you know it was kind of a smaller group which 
honestly, it made it kind of better. It kind of made it feel like you had to kind of pay attention else you're the fucking asshole in the room. So <laughs> it was nice. I, I, I enjoyed it. Getting to chat with everybody was nice. And Drew and I, uh, anybody that followed the, the, the Drew and Fuchsia page, we sent them out a link um, of exclusives. So if you guys are listening and you're like, I want those exclusives or you haven't got them yet, you know, send us a message, follow the page. And we'll lace you with uh, an exclusive edit pack as well. Any st- offer still stands. Yeah, just go go to the Facebook group. I keep saying it. There, the the links are still pinned to the top. So if you're not on the Facebook group, uh, go on there. This is all free, by the way. We're not we're not selling you on shit. It's free. Right. Just go there, get a bunch of exclusive shit, free edits, videos, all kinds of stuff. Correct. Correct. Uh, later that night, after the conference was over, we went to this. Uh, Star Wars Cantina pop-up bar in Hollywood, which it was cool. It was weird at the same time, I feel like is a nice way to say it. Um, we walk in and I'm like hype because I like Star Wars. I'm not like a super, super crazy fan, but I like it. And um, it was weird because when we got into the bar, Mario was bartending. And shortly <laughs> after that, Luigi showed up too. And that that really threw me off. You know, I thought maybe... Maybe we'd have like a Jedi master behind the bar. I don't know. So I, I spoke to PJ about this because he went to pre on Joni for those that don't know, who's basically the lightsaber Jedi himself. Right. Um, if you go over to his page, check it out. He was there the day before and he broke it down for me. Cause I, I said, Oh, uh, what do you think, man? I don't know. It was a little light on the star Wars. And he said, they were kind of doing a star Wars run, but if you walked in, it was also star Trek. So us being, not fully into you know full deep nerds it, oh, it yeah, was, i don't, I don't get I, I, I don't have the, the in me too much you know uh it, it was uh star trek and so i think they're kind of doing a bunch of different themes in there it's just kind of uh, a nerd themed bar you know with an emphasis on <laughs> with an emphasis on star wars for what it was for that dude if you want to see mario and luigi bartend at a star wars bar highly recommend okay but <laughs> Also, what I wanted to say is they had a shot and a beer pairing, too. You guys noticed the trend of downhill here. <laughs> um, so then <laughs> might have had one or two of those shot or beer pairings. Because uh, you can't just have just the beer. You got to get the, the pairing. And then we, we took went, a journey from there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah journey. Uh, to Amoeba. Amoeba <laughs> yeah. Records. More record stores. Didn't buy anything, but that was fun. You know, check out. And then from there, we walked over to... Good time at Davy Wayne's. Davy Wayne's, the seventies uh, thing, and it's put on by the Houston Brothers. Am I, am I correct? It's like they're actually right. their first bar. Who you know they've they're actually they're doing so many spots now. They've become pretty famous, and this was one of their first ones. And from what I've heard, of the story, the lore is it's based after their dad's house. So it has shag carpet. It's got old lamps, and you kind of party in the living room, and then you go back to the bars in the back. And that's the kitchen. And then it has a, an outside patio. So really cool themed spot. And, you know, uh, they, they did, uh, off the record, right. And mm-hmm. on the record, yeah. whatever it is, on the record, in Vegas. Yeah. Off the record, on the record, off the record, yeah. <laughs> something about a record. <laughs> so, yeah, so they're, they're on the, they're on the come up. This one, like, put them on the map, and they've just been blown up since. So, yeah. really dope. And uh, then that's basically lights out for the rest of that that night. <laughs> they had a shot got of a, beer as well. <laughs> got, a, got a little In-N-Out burger on the way home. Got my first flying Dutchman. Didn't know what that was, but had to have one. <laughs> you don't know what it is. Google it. It's, yeah, I, uh, be, be careful. You have uh, safe safe uh search on maybe just keep in and out in the title for what, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> clean search on um from there we went <laughs> from then <laughs> the party continues i mean like i said this is you know very drunk waking up the next day and just going oh god like showering and brushing it off and getting back to it so i was uh, pretty few- put together now, all of a sudden get the fuck out of here so from there we uh um, wednesday uh our homie jd, JD. from connecticut connecticut came into town uh mm-hmm. shout out jd uh he was in town for now he came and uh crashed at the at the pad 
And uh, we went and I took them to tacos, more tacos. These guys come oh, yeah. from out of town and out of California, and everyone wants tacos. So that's basically what we did tacos and burgers. So we went and got tacos masa, and Taco it's masa. bomb. So it was good. good. Yeah, it's so very good. good. From there, we went to uh, the Beat Source pre nom party at the Beat Source offices. And um, where, 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 where is the uh, why can't that's, it starts that's with the, a B? <laughs> <laughs> why can't I think of the town right off Beverly Hills? Beverly Hills, Hills, Hills that's right. Hills. It's like Culver City, and you know, shout out to Phenom and Dazzler and Quickie, Quickie. and everyone that had us out. It was really dope to just go and rub some elbows. You know, we met Mojax out there, and we were hanging out, hanging out with uh, Graham and Stone, and it was just dope. Dude. It was just fun. Yeah. Um, Talked to elbows. Cass from Miami. Uh, Stylus yeah. Chris was there. Kid Cut Up. I'm just trying to think of other people we talked with. It was fun. It was Analyze. so many people there. Yeah, Analyze. There was just so many people there. It was it was like a bit overwhelming. <laughs> but it was nice. It was nice to kind of chat with everybody and have everybody on one place. There were people DJing, too, at one point. But it was so busy, it was really kind of hard to tell like what was happening with that. Again, it was nice to kind of go uh, have that meet up. And then afterwards, uh, Drew kept uh, saying that we needed to go to Apple Pan. Apple Pan is a burger place, and uh, come to find out, it's a burger place that opened in 1927. So we stopped by there, and it was awesome. I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, they, you just pull up to the bar, and they make it right there, right in front of you, fresh, wrap it in paper, throw it in front of you. I never had it. I, I've been – everyone keeps getting me hyped on it. So I had to check it out. What, what would you say? What's your, what's, your, what's your rating on it? Better than In-N-Out? It was pretty good. Yeah. You know, you know – uh, it's comparing apples to oranges, pun intended. And uh, and um, <laughs> I think, you know, I ate it. And I was so hungry that I crushed it. But then, like, the next day when I was thinking how I wanted a burger again, I was like, ooh, that apple pan was really good. And they put, like, this bed of lettuce on the bottom, like a bed of crunchy, crispy, thick iceberg lettuce on the bottom of the burger. And it tasted so good. Like, that made it, like... <sighs> It's so weird. You wouldn't think that that would make a huge difference, but it really, really did. It, it was super awesome. fresh. Just being able to have it made in front of you and, and the nostalgia of it. So look that one up. Yeah, especially if you're out there visiting. Yeah, I'd go out there again. It's like a house just in the middle of all these businesses, and you know all the workers have been there for years and years and years. So yeah, that was good. It was bomb. Basically came home and like I said, we're running, we're burning the candle at both ends. We're 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 dead and we had Nam the next day. So went to bed and no, you didn't. You had the DJ that night. Oh, fuck, at bungalow. Well, that's See, how, that's how busy it was. You can't even remember. He had a girl that looks like the Muppet Babies trying to make her song requests from him all night. <laughs> she she was just bugging the shit out of him and boy, fucking Muppet Babies up in there. <laughs> Uh, she just kept saying, I know I'm so hot, but I, uh, I, no, this I don't is want the you line. to. Oh. She, me and JD are standing there. Drew's DJing. And this drunk, this drunk lady is, <laughs> I know what you're thinking to me and JD. And we're like looking at each other. I know what you're thinking. Pretty girl like me. She gets whatever she wants. And I wanted to be like, nah, chick. What I'm really thinking is you have way too much Botox. Way too much. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> but she not only doubled down on the, I know what you're thinking, pretty girl like me, not once, but twice. She said it. <laughs> there she is. That's her. Uh, <laughs> has to comb those eyelashes. <laughs> oh, man. So she, she was bugging me. And, uh, but. I don't so even know funny. what she was saying half the time, except for the running girl well, like me. Well, actually, she we're right next to a hotel, and we get a lot on the Wednesdays. We get a lot of corporates that come in. You know, it's like their off day in between their their corporate right right meetup. And so we had about a hundred people roll in. That you know, I was kind of catering to them a little bit, and she just kept coming up asking for stuff. She's like, "It's all." Uh, where's where's the songs for me? You know, just woe is me. But I gave Great. her a gold star, hit her with that gold star, and kept moving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I know, I'm sure to thank him. From there, we went to bed. Oh, man. To bed. And, uh, and we wake up bright and early for Nam. This Nam. is Rod picked us there. up. Yeah. Rod picked us up in that sports car of his. <laughs> Shout out to Rod Phillips, the video guy. Uh, behind the scenes, you don't always get to see him. But yeah, he picked us up and made it out to out to Nam. And it was a Nammy. it was a, this is what I'll say. It's the first year back since uh COVID kind of knocked it off its feet. So uh one year it was late August, one it was June, and they finally got it back to the regular scheduled time, January. It was busy. It seemed like everything was back in place. It's just it also seemed like it was light on the releases. So a lot of companies weren't there. So it was full, but a lot of companies weren't there. So there was also very limited releases. Um, first, you know, you guys paying attention to any of the, the announcements. Uh, Alpha Theta has the Pioneer Mega brand launched their own brand. And they have a, a battery-operated controller with a battery operated speaker that was kind of the big news from pioneer other than that there's a lot of little onesies and twosies things that i saw that um rcf launched a new speaker and we got to hear that was dope uh we went to the uh the base boss and at one point they did a a demo and they were seeing how loud they could get it to shake tiles off of the ceiling it was it's pretty wild so yeah, it was little things and just connecting with the brands and talking to the brands one on one, and that's what I think uh, gets overshadowed on what that whole show is for. You know, we go for the networking, but it is a chance to get right in front of your favorite brand and you know ask them very deep questions about you know their speakers and which one, what does this and what does this, or maybe you're running it wrong. Yeah, it was my first time going to Nam and. Honestly, I thought it was really cool. It was way, way bigger than, you know, I expected. And uh, it was crazy. Stevie Wonder was there just walking around. Corey Feldman, who's probably <laughs> the biggest person I've ever seen. And by biggest, I mean littlest. But he was there walking around and, you know, all of his stardom. And, you know, he definitely didn't want to be seen because he had on a gold shimmery jacket. <laughs> and platform Doc Martens. Uh, he probably didn't want to be seen at all. <laughs> Look at like Michael Jackson too. Uh, <laughs> Hair tied back just like Michael Jackson. Like yeah. Uh, literally. Yeah. But I thought it was a cool event and I would definitely go again next year. I was kind of sad that I had to fly out that next morning because I would have liked to have gone back and, and done a little more. Um, we hung out mostly in the DJ area. I would like to go on and see more stuff for like production and, and all of that. And, you know, kind of was like, we got there and then the next thing you know, it was over, you know, they, they kick you out. It's time to go. Uh, so. it, it, it goes quick. There's lots of networking. I, I, I definitely recommend two days. I think any more than that's just excessive, but uh, two days for sure. Me and JD ended up going the next day and it was nice having because you're there the first day and everyone hasn't seen each other and it's it's just networking. You're getting pulled in every direction and you get to meet tons of famous DJs and uh, you know all kinds of different people. So the networking is awesome, but uh, yeah. it is cool having that second day to be able to talk with uh, the dealers. We got to meet our DJ hero or DJ YouTube hero, DJ Unstoppable. Yep, uh, shout out to DJ to Unstoppable. Him. That was yeah. pretty dope. Uh, we got we got to to meet him. I got to meet a lot of guys that I haven't met before, just because I'm you know in 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 the Midwest and everybody else is you know at different locations and you know there's a lot of a lot of DJs out in the LA area in general. So it's co- cool to kind of get to meet everybody. Again, I would I would definitely go back and um, it's a bit overwhelming. There's a lot to take in. We went back to Drew's house after that and we didn't do anything but just kind of sit at the table and talk music and and yeah. and you know just what djs do until it was time for me to go to bed and get up and come back to cincy and land at 7 30 p.m cincy time to make my 9 p.m gig cut it close cut it close. close yeah, yeah. Uh, right into the gig 
And I had a gig as well. Uh, I, I went to Nam again. I went back and I saw a couple of those other booths. But uh, one of the things I am going to pick up is from ADJ, the, the Wolf Mix. Um, I want to just up my lighting game a little bit. So that is something I'm going to pick up. Um, I already have the Everse Eights. I choose that over the Pioneer speaker. Pioneer speaker is cool, but uh I, the specific reason i use the everse 8 is for ceremonies so having that the plug for a mic keeps it not not needing any extra power so talking with sure also about different mic options so uh it was cool to go back that next day and then i dj that night you know it's just back on the grind it was it was an awesome night i had a great great night it was a great party uh, you, how was your Friday night going back into it after that? It was good. It was actually a pretty busy night as well. Um, you know, when I left for your, your house that Sunday morning of six degrees here in Cincinnati. And when I got back that Friday, it was like 50 degrees. So it was nice to be back to where it wasn't so freezing. So I think people were out cause the cold kind of went away. I just want to shout out the the guys that came out that Friday night for me it was, um, my Hawaiian homies, uh, Joe Cortez and Tony. So, and then also, he's going to be coming up on the show here uh, next week, uh, DJ Mojo, uh, YouTube sensation, <laughs> YouTube guy. So they, they came out and supported. Uh, but it was it was packed to the gills, and it was a super fun night. That next Thursday, I, I took the day off and recouped. What then you I mean the next Saturday? Saturday, sorry. The next Saturday, took the day off, recouped, and then uh, went back out because everyone's in town. So... You know, definitely want to. I had the night off and uh, had to go make some rounds. So, met up with DJ Pinky. We went to three different places. We saw Steve Wonder at the bungalow. We saw Analyze, Steve Dub, DJ E's, and Cutso. They were at another place in Costa Mesa and then made it over to Heat, my uh, uh, one of my favorite clubs, and saw saw Crooked set. And it, oh, it was awesome, dude. He killed it. Uh, it was, it was a really good set. Uh, it was good to see someone run that room that I haven't. I've never seen play live before. And since I'm familiar with that room, it was just cool to see someone, you know, do it their own style. And it was a really cool night. It was a good night. Awesome. Awesome. I, uh, I just did my normal Saturday thing at the red leprechaun and kind of completed the cycle of since I left for the trip. So that was that. And, um, again, you know, uh, hopefully have this, uh, this gig vlog or trip vlog out, um, when this video goes live, uh, anyway, we just kind of wanted to hop on here and kind of recap the the whole Nam our, and our trip, and just kind of talk to you guys about what happened and uh, all that. So, Drew, you got anything else? Oh, it was such a great week! So awesome having you out, JD out, and just meeting all the homies. Need a little mini vacation. That's not going to happen because I'm headed back to Vegas here this week for <laughs> another event. But hey, you got to be blessed when the work comes. You got to you got to take it. So. Dude, thank you everyone for listening. Everyone that's been buying all the merch is amazing. The numbers are crazy. We're we're very blessed that you guys like the merch. So yeah, hopefully see you on the the Crate Hackers episode, and you know keep uh, all the stuff coming. Thank you guys. Until next time, we'll talk to you soon. Peace. Peace.